كيف؟ هاو؟ الجنة تطلب من من؟ Paradise it is sought from who؟ من الله from الله لماذا؟ why؟ لأنه لا أحد يقدر على إعطاء الجنة إلا الله because nobody has ability to give you Jannah except Allah طيب الرزق يطلب من من؟ Okay now الرزق provisions sustenance Who is it supplicate? Who is it sought from? It's from Allah. It's sought from Allah. In Allah, who is it? Like Allah said in the Quran, indeed Allah, He is Al Razak, the one who gives sustenance or provisions. What are the examples of this? I'm going to give you an example before you accept. I'm going to give you an example regarding this. How somebody should be attached to Allah before the blessing comes. يمشي بعض الناس في الطريق. So some people they walk in the streets. ثم ينظر في متاع الدنيا. and then they look at the beautification of the world. ينظر إلى القصور والعمائد والسيارات وما أنعم الله سبحانه وتعالى به على العباد من زوجات وأولاد وغيرها أو أموال. so people walk in the streets and they look at all the beautification of this world. they look they see the castles, the lofty buildings, the cars, and what Allah has blessed upon His slaves like wives and and children and also wealth. فَيُ فَكِّرْ هَذَا فِي مَالَ وَهُوَ يَمْشِي وَانْظُرْ فِي مَتَاعِ الدُّنْيَا. So this person who is walking along the street and he is looking at the beautification of the world, what does he think in his mind? يقول يعني بينه وبين نفسه. He says when he says to himself, لو يتعرف علي الملك أو الرئيس أو الوزير أو الملياردير أو التاجر الفلاني أو كذا أو كذا من الأثرياء يتعرف علي ثم يعطيني من أمواله. So this person says to himself, if only the king or the minister or the prince or the millionaire or the 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 businessman, if only they knew me personally, and then maybe they would give me something as well. أو يعطيني شيء مفتوح. Or if only this millionaire or this king was to give me an open empty check, signed check. أو يقول لي خذ من أموالي ما شئ ودع ما شئ. Or this rich person, he comes to me and he says, take whatever you want from my wealth and leave whatever you want from my wealth. أما الناس على هذا إلا إلا من رحم الله. Most of the people they have this type of thinking, except the one who Allah's mercy upon him. Correct? Now, كما ذكرنا لكم الجنة لا تطلب إلا من الله. كذلك الرزق لا يطلب إلا من الله. But just as we have mentioned, if paradise is not sought except from Allah, then simply provisions and sustenance cannot be sought except from Allah. So now this person, before the blessing has come to him, he has attached himself to other than Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ that have your reliance and, and be attached to the one who is al hay who is ever living and he will never die. Because those people, being the kings and the rich people and the businessmen, they will all die, they will all pass away. And Allah is the one who is ever living and he will never pass away. Allah is the one who provides al Raza, gives sustenance in such large amounts. And those people do not have anything. So therefore, before the blessing comes to you, you have to have your relationship and your attachment to Allah and not anybody else. Like Allah said in the Quran, that those people that you worship besides Allah, they themselves don't own any possessions or any sustenance. So the meaning of the ayah is that seek your provisions with Allah and nobody else. And therefore it's not correct or possible for you to seek sustenance or provisions from anybody else besides Allah. So therefore, this is the first issue regarding ni'mah, regarding the blessings. 
that blessings, ni'ma, they are a form of a test or, or a trial. And that you have to have an attachment and relationship to Allah before the blessing comes. Okay, so now you have this attachment to Allah and now the blessing has come. So what should you do? You have to show thanks and be gracious for the blessing. And the opposite of being thankful for the blessing is kufr al-ni'mah, rejecting the blessing. How should a blessing be thanked upon? You have to show thankfulness for the blessing in your heart and upon your tongue and also upon your limbs. In your heart, in your heart by knowing, appreciating and understanding that every single blessing that you have is from Allah. A person, he passes exams. Or for example, he gathers some wealth, he acquires some wealth. Or any other blessing from amongst the blessings. What does a person, what should a person be believing in his heart? That this blessing is from Allah. Because some people may like guide them and guide us. They say that this, what they've acquired is because of us trying and striving. This is because of my work and my working hard. And I am deserving of this. I am the most deserving person of this blessing. Or, or a person would say that Allah knows that I am the one who is deserving of this wealth. So he doesn't show thankfulness to Allah for this wealth. Or a person would say that we're from a family of rich people. And we inherit this blessing one after the other, we keep inheriting it. Or a person would say that the only reason I have acquired this blessing or this wealth is because of my knowledge. I know that this blessing or this wealth can be acquired from this place by doing this thing. And therefore in his heart, the slave has to thank Allah. Upon his tongue, like Allah said in the Quran, and ask for the blessings of your Lord for Hadith and speak about them. So, as is in the ayah, when he saw the ni'mah, the blessing, it was settled with him, or he, he had it in his possession. He said, this person said, that this blessing is from the virtue and the kindness of my Lord. So he can test me whether I am showing gr uh, gratefulness or thanks to him or whether I reject it. You ask some people, You ask some people, where did you get this wealth from? Where is this car from? How did you memorize? How have you become very good in your academic studies? How, how are you this morning? You should say, This is from the kindness and the virtues of my Lord. So, you should make your tongue um, used to always showing thanks to the one who is kind and the one who gives ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that is given to you, every single blessing that is given to you, you say it is from the virtue and the kindness of my Lord. This is upon the tongue. As for showing a shukr upon your limbs, that you should use these limbs, are your actions, in showing gratefulness and thanks to Allah, the one who gives, and not in rejecting and disbelieving in Him. And every single blessing, according to every single blessing, i.e., the actions of your names and how you show thankfulness is according to the blessing that you've been given. So, for example, if Allah gives you or blesses you with wealth, if Allah blesses you with certain wealth, how do you show thankfulness or how do you show gratefulness to Allah? in terms of your limbs for this wealth, then you give some of this wealth in 
in the sake of Allah, the one who has, who, who has given you this wealth. And I'm Allah, I mean. And not in disobedience to Allah. If Allah has given you the na'mat al basar if Allah subhanahu has blessed you with the blessing of uh, of your sight, eyesight. <laughs> you only look at those things which Allah has made permissible for you. And you don't look at those things which Allah has made impermissible. <laughs> Allah has blessed you with the blessing of hearing. <laughs> you don't listen to haram things. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa has blessed you with the blessing of knowledge. <laughs> you show thank thankfulness or thanks of the upon this blessing <laughs> by teaching the people. يعني دخل رجل إلى المسجد ما. So for example, a person, a man enters into this masjid. وصلى في هذا الاتجاه عكس القبلة. And he prayed facing that way, meaning opposite to the qibla. فماذا تصنع؟ تتركه؟ So what should you do? Leave him alone? لا. No. لأن الله أنعم عليك بنعمة نعمة معرفة جهة القبلة. Because Allah, He is the one who blessed you with the knowledge of knowing where the qibla is, the direction of the qibla. وحال هذا الرجل يحتاج إلى تعليم. And this person who's coming, he is in need of being taught and educated. So therefore, you guide him towards the qibla, the direction of the qibla. Oh, a person comes and he says, where is the qibla? What do you say to him? Allah, I don't give a fatwa. والذي تشك فيه لا تتكلم فيه إطلاقا ولا تفتي أصلا أن الفتوى لا بد من الرجوع فيها إلى العلماء. نعم. So he said that this matter, knowing where the qibla is, is something that you know 100%. You're absolutely certain of it. So you don't say to him, Allah wa alam, I don't give a fatwa here. Rather, every single thing that you have certainty in, every piece of knowledge that you are certain about, then you teach. As for those things that you have some doubt about, then you don't talk about them at all. You don't talk about them. نعم. لو دخلت مرأة. If a woman enters. وسألت مثلاً عن مسألة في الطلاق. And she asks you regarding an issue regarding relating to a طلاق. ما تسمع لها. What are you going to say to her or do to her? تقول لها لابد من الرجوع للعلماء أو هذا هو رقم الإفتاء تجعله. You have to say to her that look, you have to go back to the scholars or this is the number. For, uh, through which you can acquire fatwa about divorce. Uh, Ibn al-Jawzi, Ibn al-Jawzi, may Allah pardon him and us, he mentioned a story. The people of Sunnah wal Jama'ah So the people of Sunnah, they sometimes mention stories not in trying to seek evidences from them or using them as an evidence, but just to support this story itself is sporting of an evidence. <laughs> because the evidence is in the Quran and the Sunnah. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with mentioning a story every now and again, but not in order to seek or drive the evidences from the story, but that the story sports an evidence. <laughs> So Ibn Jawzi, may Allah pardon him and us, he said, 